Hello everybody, Morbtron here. Today is December 10th, 2019, which makes it a Tuesday and a reset day, and also the start of Season 9, Season of Dawn. And there's a lot that has changed, so I'm going to leave a link down in the description down below to the Bungie website that goes over patch notes if you want to read over it yourself. I will not be going over every single change, as this video would be like an hour long if I did that. I'm going to try to make this as quickly as possible. So when you first log in today, go to the tower and definitely visit Shax, Vuvuzela, or Zavala, and the Drifter, as there are new ritual weapons this season, which I was actually concerned about. They didn't mention it at all in any TWAB or anything like that, but we have a shotgun called Python from the Drifter, which requires a lot of shotgun kills, an infinite rank of heroic. That's a, a lot of shotgun kills. Uh, we have a linear fusion rifle for um, Crucible called the Komodo 4FR, which shouldn't take too long to get as long as you use Arbalist and can aim. And we have anything that moves, which uh, gives us the Buzzard Sidearm for Vanguard stuff. So you need Final Blows, Airborne Final Blows, and points. Whatever you get points from, I don't know. You just need points. And 100% of them, by the way. But other things, of course, there have been directory updates. Things of that nature. Uh, new um, ordeal strikes have been put into rotation. Last season's ordeal strikes have been kind of taken out of rotation, that sort of thing. Uh, let's check out the solar system here quick before we go into any Eververse specifics. But in the Vanguard, we have the regular Nightfalls, the Tree of Probabilities, which gives you the DFA Year 1 Hand Cannon and the Kinetic Slot, Savathun Song, which gives you Duty Bound, Year 1 Kinetic Auto Rifle, and the Warden of Nothing, which gives you the Warden's Law Hand Cannon. That's a Year 2 Hand Cannon, but it's pretty trash. But if you're looking to complete your collections, there you go. The Ordeal this week is a new one for this season. It's not new in general, just new for the Ordeal. It is the arms dealer strike in the EDZ. So we have Pestilence. When defeated Scions spawn Void Fire Pools at their feet. Not unlike other things we've had very similar to that, depending on what enemy type you're going up against. We have Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Attrition. So you need to pick up those Void Orbs on the... Or, sorry, Wells of Light on the ground, not Void Orbs, to regenerate your health. We have just more Champions in general, like Normal for a Master Nightfall. Match game, which is normal, and Zahn's Stratagem, which solar damage is increased and incoming airborne damage is increased. So that final boss fight is going to really hurt with the flame turrets and the solar sniper and the uh, Cabal ships flying through all the time. It's going to hurt. So if you don't nuke down that boss, it's going to suck. Uh, but if you look into the Crucible directory here, some things look a little bit different. We have the Elimination uh, playlist here now as its own separate thing, so that's pretty cool. Bungie did say they were going to do that. It's just cool seeing uh, just more stuff in the Crucible directory, more things to do. Of course, we still have Survival and Solo Survival over here. Classic Mix is at the bottom right still. Lockdown is the sweatier rotator weekly. And we actually have Clash as the one up here. So if you just want to play Clash, there you go. That's probably where I'll spend most of my time in the Crucible this week. And of course, we have just Rumble over here and regular control there with private matches there. And the Gamut directory, nothing has changed. Don't expect it to for a while. Uh, the Flashpoint this week is on Mercury as, hey, Season of Dawn stuff is all on Mercury. Weird. And then on the Moon, we have Omnigul, uh, Zydron, and... Uh, this, yeah, I forget this guy's name all the time. Uh, Skolas as the Nightmare Hunts this week there. We still do get Pinnacle Gear from the Garden of Salvation and the Pit of Heresy. Since there isn't a new dungeon and there is not a new raid this season, we can still get Pinnacle stuff from there, and it should be easy-peasy to farm up. Um, by the way, the Pinnacle cap has now been raised to 970 from 960, so we can get new Pinnacle stuff. More power. More power is Nito Burrito. Well, let's check out the Eververse stuff here. Let's click on the Store tab. Now, over here we have different armor sets. You can kind of see them. They should kind of show them off all there. Personally, I think the Warlock set looks the best. Uh, Hunter would be a close second. And the Titan armor, you'll see here in a minute, just kind of makes your Titan look like a giant potato. Um, but the new weapon ornaments, of course, we have one for Tractor Cannon called the Abyssal Scream. It's pretty cool. Uh, we have the Ash Angel Sparrow. Pretty interesting design. It looks like kind of like a torpedo, I guess. I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, Trader Primus Shell. 
which is a uh, Omni Telemetry shell. So pretty useless, but it does look pretty cool, I guess. Um, and we just have a bunch of transmit effects. I'll let you look at all that stuff. But the free stuff this week, or the bright dust stuff this week, we have a new thing called the Concentrated Matter Gem, which costs 200 bright dust, and when consumed, gives you a buff that will have boss kills have a chance to um, drop upgrade modules. And the buff doesn't go away, of course, until you get an upgrade module. It's just another way for us to get rid of our bright dust, so we have the higher... Uh, need to uh, spend real money on this stuff. But if you're looking for upgrade modules, that's another way to do it. We also have the Scarlet Swarm shell for Bright Dust this week. Looks pretty cool. Looks very uh, Shadow Keepish. We have the Ding emote. If you are really, really into annoying the hell out of other players with that Ding sound, there you go. You can buy it with Bright Dust now. We have a new Sparrow, I think it's new. The Four Degrees of Separation for Bright Dust, which is a Divinity Sparrow. Not really my cup of tea, but I'm sure some people out there will like the aesthetic. Uh, we also have the Refashion of Shapes ship again for Bright Dust, and the Sky Perdition Weapon Ornament for Divinity. Other things for the season that are not um, class-specific. I'll let you go over all these finishers, but I'm looking at some weapon ornaments. We have Black Death. For the Crimson, which actually isn't a hot pile of garbage anymore, thanks to a buff from last season. Uh, Long Live the Queen, a new weapon ornament for Telesto. Telesto's been kind of a taboo weapon to use. Uh, I don't really see many people using it. Personally, I like it, but I have other exotics I want to use. But there's a new ornament for it. We have the Packmaster's Grind weapon ornament for uh, the Lord of Wolves. I think it looks really good, minus this fur. Like, the texture they used on it was very, like... I don't know, I want to say like PlayStation 3, Xbox, like regular Xbox or Xbox 360 kind of graphics. Looks really bad. The fur looks bad. The rest of the weapon looks good. Um, ain't my first rodeo. This is for the uh, chaperone, of course. Very wood greenish. Uh, it's got like some rusted chain there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool looking. Uh, Violent Exorcism. Cool name. Not really a fan of the weapon ornament, though. That is for the Arbalist. And... Uh, yeah, so onto the class-specific stuff. I'll let you look at all the emotes yourself because this video does not need to be 30 minutes long. Um, this is the armor for the Titan. You look like a potato. Or maybe I would say Zarya from Overwatch. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, you look like Zarya from Overwatch. Or a potato. One of the two. Um, now we do have class-specific finishers this time. We have Nail on the Head, which is a finisher for the Titan. You just kind of whip a hammer at it. Pretty cool. We have the Embodiment of the War Beast, which is a new armor ornament for the Doomfang Pauldrons. Really good looking. Does not make them look like Doomfang Pauldrons at all. Um, but looks cool. I like the way that looks. Um, other class-specific stuff for the Titan, we have the Sunbreaker's Anticipation. And we also have the Sentinel's Respite. And now I'm going to uh, go over the other class stuff on my Hunter and my Warlock. And then when we come back uh, from that, I will go over the uh, patch notes. like At least the most important parts that I'm interested in anyway. Alright, so I'm on the Warlock and we're looking at the armor set first, which is the Wrath of Trail uh, set. Looks pretty decent. I'm a fan of the helmet. Uh, everything else just kind of looks like standard warlocky stuff to me. Um, you know, got a robe that looks like a trench coat. It's got leatherish looking boots. I mean, it's decent. I think it looks better, much, much better than the Titan set for sure. Um, Warlock finisher on guard. Very Dawnblade. It'd be cool if the actual Dawnblade super looked like that. Let's do that again. That, that was cool. That was a cool thing. And the ornament is for the getaway artist. Pretty decent looking, I guess. Kind of changes it, gives it more of like a cabalish looking vibe, I guess. It's kind of the theme for the season, anyway. Um, other warlock stuff. We have the Dawn Blades Anticipation. Looks like you're sharpening your flaming sword made out of magic. Do, do warlocks know that their sword isn't actually a real sword? Anyway, Void Walkers Respite. You're just kind of playing with a ball of void. That's pretty dangerous. Just a sand. Just throwing that out there. All right, on to the Hunter. Okay, so the Hunter. We have the Virulent Hunter bundle first. Looks like it's a Viced-themed armor. I'm not sure why the Warlock didn't get 
weapon foundry themed armor, but the Titan and the Hunter did. Um, anyway, the Vice armor does look better, but it's still kind of factory foundry themed armor. I think it would look a lot better without the Vice stuff on it myself, but oh well. I'm sure, I mean, it looks decent at least. It's not, you don't look like a giant potato like you do as a Titan, but I would say the Titan armor set is the weakest out of all of them, but oh well. Stuff happens. We have the Sure Shot, which is a damn good finisher. If I mained a Hunter, I would definitely be thirsty for this emote. That's that's super good. Uh, we have two Hunter ornaments. I wonder if I missed ornaments for the other classes as well. No, I don't want to purchase silver. Um, we have the Mantle of Remembrance. This is for the Shinobu's Vow. Pretty underused exotic, in my opinion. And it kind of changes it up a little bit. Makes it more uh, Kabbalish. Then we have another ornament, and this has got to be for, um, what do we call it? The Orpheus Rig. There we go. I wonder how it's going to shade her. It looks pretty decent, I guess. Pretty cool. Kind of looks kind of Dreaming City-esque, and boy, do hunters have tiny feet. Anyway, on to finishers. We have the, oh, I'm sorry, emotes. The Gunslinger's Anticipation, kind of twirling your flaming knife. At least you're not like a warlock and trying to sharpen a sword made out of light and magic. Anyway, uh, Night Stalker's Respite. It's pretty cool. Showing off the void daggers. Neato Burrito. Let's go back to the Titan and check out the rest of the solar system. All right, so patch notes. At least the important ones, anyway. We're going to go over ability changes, and uh, I'll let you read the rest if you're interested. Like I said, link down in the description for that. But Titan stuff. We have the top path for uh, Sunbreaker, which is called Code of the Fireforge. So Vulcan's Rage is the thing that makes your hammers do explosive damage. Regular Hammers of Soul don't explode, but Top Tree does. So, it, it makes the detonation more deadly, but adds a half a second timer onto that. Not sure what it is, what, what the uh, big deal is with the half a second timer added in, but I don't know, maybe it helps the game calculate stuff, I don't know. And then increase the cluster sp spread as well. I don't know what they mean by made Vulcan's range or rage much more angry. I don't know if that means it does more damage. That'd be nice to actually have numbers there, but um, overall changes for Hammer of Souls. So this affects both bottom and top tree for Sunbreaker. The impact damage has been decreased from 70 to 50, but the detonation damage of the Hammer Explosions has been increased from 205 to 70. So we still lost 5 damage overall. Um, not that big of a deal, though. 5 damage isn't going to make or break. A, a battle in Crucible. Um, but the Code of the Devastator, of course, we already know these changes. It has been talked about for a while. Increased the impact of the Throwing Hammer. Increased Hammer Pickup Radius. Roaring Flames has been changed. Burning Maul has been tweaked. Bloody Blots better. Now, what I'm interested in is the Code of the Siege Breaker, or Bottom Tree, for um, Sunbreakers. So, it has they've increased the Explosion Radius of Mortar Blast, from 5 to 6 meters, which is just throwing a hammer uh, in super. Um, the hammer explosions in bottom tree have always been a little bit small, so having them one more meter in size is pretty good. And the big, huge change is um, for Soul Invictus, which is what gives uh, the Sun Warrior buff from sunspots on the ground. And basically, they've just made this one of the most overpowered classes in the game. Um, so, kills with the Sun Warrior buff active can now make sunspots. And they say this is based on some other things. So, in Crucible, if you kill somebody with the Sun Warrior perk active on you, you are going to generate a sunspot on them. And if you have the exotic legs for sunspots, you can have the Sun Warrior buff for 10 seconds. That's an eternity in the Crucible. You get a kill. Your weapons are doing more damage during this, by the way. You're getting your abilities back faster. You can create another sunspot. So you can go basically an entire game constantly chaining these sunspots over and over again. Now, in things like Nightfalls and other PvE activities, um, a boss kill is going to generate a sunspot no matter what. Majors are 0.5 and minors are 0.25, which meaning that you'd have to kill two majors or 
four minors or a major and two minors or any combination that equals one to create a sunspot. And there is a cooldown of one second on creating sunspots. Not only can you create more sunspots, but they've increased the ability recharge scaler by 35%. So ability to recharge rate has been increased from standing in sunspots. Bottom tree sunbreaker just became the most powerful subclass in the game. Um, now code of the striker, which is the thunder crash middle tree for, um, sent not sentinel striker Titans. That damage has been increased by quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, good, good stuff. And then we have, you know, the Hunter changes that we've known about changed to a Proximity Explosive Knife, which is going to be interesting to play with and against in Crucible. Um, other changes, there's been more damage fall off added to Six Shooter to make it feel more different than the other, you know, bottom tree. Um, we have Knife Juggler, which is the Weighted Knife, which is a one-shot headshot kill in the Crucible. That's going to be interesting to play with and against again. Uh, pr practice makes perfect has been tweaked a little bit to have the buff last longer, but you get less super energy per tick So interesting there and crowd pleaser just makes getting precision kills actually mean something with bottom tree and Warlocks Reduce the speed of burst glide activations while in super For Dawnblade, that's going to make them actually Not super difficult to get away from now. I enjoy that and on PC, they were a, a, impossible. Not even a nightmare to get away from. They were impossible to get away from. Um, now, other changes to top path, of course, we have the new melee, which is a ranged melee ability because Warlocks needed more of those. Shoot three spiraling homing projectiles. Homing projectiles. And they do about 35 damage per projectile as well. So that's going to hurt a lot in Crucible. Uh, wing to Sun, other stuff. Th these are all changes we've talked about before that Bungie has talked about before. Um, this is a big change for Middle Tree or Attunement of Grace Warlocks. Um, it doubled the range that Empower Effect is applied from 12 meters to 24 meters. That's a lot. That's huge. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, the Empower buff is, of course, the buff that you give people when you get a melee kill. And increase the rating radius that healing grenade is applied to friendly targets from 1 meter to 3.5 meters. So that's another gigantic buff. And Benevolent Dawn, the buff can now be refreshed if an additional friendly target are healed or empowered while you still have the buff. So Benevolent Dawn can be chained now just like I was talking about with the sunspots for titans. So Attunement of Grace Warlocks are going to have their abilities constantly if they're playing like an actual support class, which is cool. Um, and now they did some tweaking to Phoenix Dive as well for bottom path for a two minute flame. Uh, now heals a fixed amount over time. Healing is interruptible from incoming damage. And while in super, returns super energy depending on how much you healed and it has diminishing returns. So this port, the first two bullet points are kind of a nerf, but the bottom two bullet points are a giant buff. And of course we have Void Walker, Two Minute Fission, Middle Path, Handheld, Supernova, Adjusting Grenade, Charge Times so that it lines up with the animations and effects. This is to make it feel more consistent to activate. They didn't need this change. It's a one-shot melee or one-shot grenade ability that has the range of basically an air until FR4. They did not need to make it more consistent and easier to use. That's fine though. Uh, Divinity has been fixed so that its weaken effect no longer stacks with other weaken effects, so. Expect to see a lot less divinity used. Uh, Xenophage PVE damage increased by 50%. Expect to see a lot more Xenophage being used. Uh, Leviathan's Breath was fixed with its ammo glitch. Cerberus Plus One was fixed with its uh, fire rate glitch. Ariana's Vow was fixed with its ammo glitch in the Crucible. And the Monte Carlo was fixed. So the Monte Carlo method no longer has a 100% chance to trigger on Guardian kills and now matches combatant chance. So that's been nerfed quite a bit there but it was more of a bug fix than an actual nerf. Linear fusions were buffed. Precision damage increased by 20%, and this change does not affect sleep or simulant, and significantly increased, increased target acquisition at close to medium ranges. There we go. Sidearms also got a buff, and of course we have the nerfs to um, Recluse and One-Eyed Mask hitting this week as well. And there we have it. That is going to be the end of this video. I know it was a longer one, but... New season, new patch notes, 
that sort of thing. Yeah. If you liked the video, you want to sh show, show your support, if I can talk today, for the channel, hit the like button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. If you're new here, subscribe for more Destiny 2 shenanigans. Oh, one last thing before I go. If you have the season pass, don't forget to collect this little box right here because you'll get your free exotic right here, the, the uh, symmetry. Pretty neat stuff. I'll be covering this in a video later. But like I said, don't forget to have a good day, everybody. And I will catch you all next time.